I'm here in Sigrefjörður because um, I was given the job to run the folk music center. It's a great job, the summer job. I feel very fortunate. Well, I'm a musician and a singer, and I'm also doing uh, working on a degree at the Icelandic University in uh, European ethnology and folklore with a special emphasis on music. My research topic is uh, the Icelandic langspil, or the uh, Icelandic version of the, the drone sitar that probably came from Norway, called Langelik in Norway, and has many versions around the globe. It was uh, a few years ago I got fascinated by this uh, very, very simple instrument, but uh, has many possibilities, both uh, as a musical instrument and as a, as a research topic. This is a long spiel, and we're going to play two long spiels, and a baroque solo. It's nice that you mentioned how crowded the, the center was because it gave a very sort of domestic feel to it because the room is quite small and the acoustics are like in a living room. And that gives you maybe uh, an idea of how it might have been uh, sound-wise at least in the old Balstova or the communal room at the old turf house farms where the lung spill was used. A lung spill, as I mentioned before, has many relatives around the globe, so it automatically connects to other cultures. There is a novel by Thorarin Eldja, one of Iceland's uh, most esteemed authors, or writers, a novel called uh, Baronin, or the Baron, it's a historic novel about a baron who came to Iceland. So he came here with his uh, cello, and I thought, after reading this chapter, I, I thought, what if this uh, baron or the other aristocrats who might have brought uh, an instrument with them, either cello or whatever, would have visited a farmer or a, or a, or someone at a, at a, at a turf house or a, or a balstova and sat in the room against a longspill player and they would have started playing together. What might have happened if these two sound worlds might have uh, merged? But this is not like uh, any any sort of sort of uh, experimentation in finding of an authentic sound or an authentic idea. It's just a play with ideas, and first and foremost to sort of show connections and show that cultures they have they're in constant conversations. And I think it's so important that folklore and uh, folk material is used in this way, is used to make sense of local life, of local culture. It, it gives us meaning, it gives us something to look back at, to, to, to uh, put us into a 
connection with the now and also helps us with the future, if you like. But also it makes us um, understand other cultures better, I think. So that's sort of the underlying idea of, of making something so simple like the Langspil connect in a way that makes sense and can be used in a creative way.